Oh, He's got the Huracan Evo. What's up, guys? It's your boy Fast Lane D, and today <laughs> we're on something a little bit different than what you're used to. We got Ducati Panigale V2. <laughs> Let's go and get that cold start going, baby. <laughs> she does not like starting. What the f it actually sounds pretty good for the stock exhaust. Now, Ducati absolutely killed it with the styling on this bike. I mean, it looks incredible. This is the V2, so I can't even imagine the V4 with the Brembo brakes, the show of piston forks. I mean, this thing is phenomenal. Ducati, y'all killed it. But all right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and hop on and go for a ride. Let's get this video going, baby. Video. <laughs> I want y'all to see some of the cars down here. It is absolutely nuts. This is a Huracan Evo right here. He's got the cover on it. This is probably gonna look really sketchy, but we're gonna flip around. Oh wow. Turning radius on this thing sucks. But you see the Huracan Evo? He's got the Huracan Evo cover on it. Dang boy. Ugh. Oh. Anyways, uh and you can tell by the outline, SLR. And then we got the Ferrari right here. I mean, and this is just part of it. I'm not gonna spread their business down here, but the old school Bentleys, I mean, stupid money in this place, man. I mean, that quick shifter, dude. That quick shifter alone is just... <laughs> Uh, I don't know these roads that well. I don't know where cops like to hide, so I really don't want to go crazy. So we're gonna go on somewhat of a chill ride, but man, dude. Wow. <laughs> this bike is just absolutely incredible. Anyway, I mean, look at this view, dude. What? I'm in love. Even as an R1 owner, I'm in love with this bike. Now, I know the biggest question I'm gonna get asked is, can you start on this bike? The simple answer is gonna be yes. You can start on a bike like this. Am I gonna recommend you to start on a bike like this? Hell no. Absolutely not. And you gotta hear me out for these reasons. Did you awake or not, nah, bro? Dude, I love that. I gotta get a quick shit for the R1. Hear me out, here's why. I mean, there's a couple reasons. So you can tune this bike down so that the power is not that aggressive. And if you watch my test ride, when I got the bike, it was in a street mode. It was in a very detuned, almost like a neutered mode. And I was like, man, where's the freaking power? And then once I figured out how to put this thing in race mode, I mean, it was game over. Like, it really woke this bike up. I mean, dude, what? That quick shift is just fun, man. And yes, you can learn it, but here's my, here's my gripe with someone wanting to start on a bike like this. Is that if you make any mistake at all, which you're going to, like, there's a very... High chances you're going to. You're new to riding, like you're still learning the ins and outs of a motorcycle. It is so expensive to fix. And okay, if money's just not an issue and you just don't care, 
Like, you just get zero absolute about how much money you spend. Then, all right, go ahead, sure. You can learn on something like this, but I feel like you won't appreciate it as much because you just haven't had that other experiences on other bikes. Like, I can appreciate this bike so much more because I've ridden several other motorcycles. Like, if you drop this thing, oh my God. The fairing prices are absolutely astronomical. Maintenance on this bike is astronomical. And when you start finicking with the Ducati, I mean, I just, I don't know. It just makes me a little nervous. Cause one, if you mess up, parts are expensive, which you're gonna mess up. Like, and that's fine. That's just part of the beast. And they're very finicky. Like if you mess up any little part of it, I mean, the bike's gonna start acting funny. It's a Ducati. It's an Italian super bike. Well, not super bike, but just, oh my God, look how sexy that is. I cannot stop taking pictures of this bike. That's definitely one thing I will say. I mean, dude, this whole experience is just like phenomenal, dude. other gripe with you starting on a bike like this you never really learn how to truly ride and don't get me wrong there's absolutely nothing wrong with electronic gates rider aids at all but i feel like if you can you have the opportunity to learn to ride a bike without all that stuff it'll set you up to be a, a much better rider like my first bike was a on a cbr fri that bike was definitely a piece of but i learned on it like i dropped it i broke the clutch lever i learned how to change the oil first car like your first car isn't supposed to be a nice car like I don't understand why there's such a, a like a disconnect when you try and tell people that with motorcycles like your first car should be a piece of sh like it should be something that runs a little funky and you got to do this that and the other to make this happen yo you guys ever have problems starting your truck dude come to me I'll fix it <laughs> <Right there. laughs> Oh, one of the windows doesn't work, or one of the doors doesn't work, or the AC doesn't work. Because it makes you appreciate when you get your actual first nice car that much more. And when you start with something like this, it's like starting with the cream of the crop. Like, you don't appreciate the beast of a bike that it is. And yes, like I said, you can start on it, but I just think you set your, yourself up for a much better experience if you start on something that's a little bit less prestige because then it just makes the whole experience when you get to this bike that much more enjoyable i mean highway i mean this thing cruises at highway speeds like it's nothing dude like on a 600 you can i mean the bike's freaking screaming at you uh -oh. like i said you wouldn't appreciate that unless you started on a smaller cc bike and really learn where you can make mistakes on that bike and it's okay like it was okay that i dropped that bike it was okay that I put too much oil in that bike when I did the oil change. I didn't know you measured the oil when it was on the center stand versus the kickstand. Like little stuff like that, you just don't learn when you first get into riding. You may not learn. And it's okay to make those mistakes. But when you get to this level of motorcycle, <laughs> I don't know if I want to be making those kind of mistakes on this bike. We're in freaking Miami. I mean, like, dude, <laughs> how blessed am I? I'm in Miami on a Ducati Panigale. Like this scenery is just epic. McLaren dealership. <laughs> wow, I didn't even notice this before. Dang, boy, big money out here. Wow, people out here fishing, like just, oh sh Oh sh <laughs> 
Man, I'm out here just cruising. Oh, he's not in his car. Oh, praise the Lord, he's not in his car. Man, look at that. Tell me that is not a cool shot. It is just gorgeous out here, man. And there's been some really cool cars driving by. People are having fun out here, man. Just enjoying South Miami. I mean, can you freaking blame them? But yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Like I said, you can start on this bike as a first bike. Do I recommend it? Nah. I definitely there's other better options out there. And I feel like you'll thank yourself once you start on something else and then get back on this bike. It can be done, but why take the unnecessary risk? If you can buy a different bike at the right price and then flip it for more money, which is what I did with my first bike, bought it for 1,700, sold it for 2,300. I made money off that bike and then I was also able to drop it and do some other things, no problem. But yeah, that's all I got for y'all, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Guys, if you got some value out of this video, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, join the fast lane gang. I'm about to have some fun on 95. <laughs> and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Look at this quick shifter. <laughs> I'll catch y'all on the next one. Fast lane these out the way. The heat on the back of the legs feels phenomenal. All right, dude, I gotta get a V4 now.